Hello, beautiful people of the internet. How are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is going to be the start of another writing vlog. In this vlog, I'm going to be talking about the edits that I'm going to be doing after my second round of beta readers. In case you're new here, I am currently working on a manuscript nicknamed Project Dagger, which is a historical murder mystery inspired by Agatha Christie and her contemporaries. I'm also going to be talking a little bit about how to research literary agents to submit your novel to. That's something that I threw out there as an idea and it seems like some of you think that information would be helpful. So we're going to talk about that as well. It's currently the middle of the workday, so I'm going to try not to talk for too long here. But that's basically what this vlog is going to be about. My second round of beta readers are currently reading the final part of my manuscript. So we're going to see their overall thoughts. I will talk in more detail later, but it is interesting because I've honestly gotten some conflicting feedback. So I've really just been trying to sit on it and think about what I personally think is best. I also need to continue doing my ReadZ course. I'm currently enrolled in their How to Write a Novel course. And actually tonight, I'm also attending another writing course. So I'm a member of Mystery Writers of America, and currently they're running what they're calling MWA University. So they're having online seminars on various topics about once a month. These seminars are free for Mystery Writers of America members like myself, and I believe they're only $25 for non-members to register. So I signed up for the one that's taking place tonight, which is going to be on setting. So I'm hoping that I will learn some really helpful tips since I do think description is something I could be better at. So that's really everything I want to discuss in this vlog. I have to get back to work, but I'll let you know how this class tonight goes. And then soon we'll talk more specifically about this beta reader feedback I've been receiving and what I'm going to do about it <laughs> because I'm kind of getting some conflicting responses, which is fun. <laughs> fun for me to decide what to do with it. Hi, baby. Hello. You were sleeping a minute ago. I didn't mean to bother you. I just thought you looked so cute. Yeah. I love you. Do you love me? And there's my other baby, who was also sleeping, but heard me come and she opened her eyes. Oh. Hello. So, I have 11 minutes and 53 seconds until my pizza is done. I have to go to another Zoom meeting tonight for a, like, volunteering thing that I signed up for. Plus, I have to take out the trash and get a shower. So, busy night here. And now the cat is screaming at me. Did you hear her scream? Anyways, last night I went to that MWA University class. It was hosted by Daniel Stashauer, who is an author of both fiction and nonfiction. There was a little Q&A at the end, too, which was fun. I believe they are going to post that on their YouTube channel at some point. So if you want to watch the playback of that, then just go follow Mr. Raiders of America on YouTube. But while I'm sitting here waiting for my pizza, I figured I would talk to you about where I kind of stand with Project Dagger. Um, I feel like the second round of beta readers has been a lot harder for me. I feel like I got a lot of feedback that was kind of not resonating with me or conflicted things that other beta readers 
were telling me. So that kind of puts me in a predicament where I have to sit on this feedback and be like, okay, what do I want to do about this? Because if people give you feedback and everyone's kind of saying the same thing, that's easy. You know, that's what you need to do because clearly this is something that multiple readers are bothered by. So like, for example, I'll get feedback where one person will say, so-and-so was my favorite character. And another person will say, so-and-so is my least favorite character. I think they're, they need work. And it's two different opinions about the same character. Or here's another thing that's happened to me. So in my first round of beta readers, there was a scene in section two where two different people told me that it was their least favorite scene and they felt like it needed improvements. I really liked that scene. So I was like, oh, okay, well, how can I improve this? And to be honest with you, I didn't end up editing it before the second round of beta readers because one, I didn't have a lot of time. And two, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to change about it based on the feedback. So I was like, well, I'm just going to give the second group of beta readers the same scene. And, you know, if they all tell me that it needs work, I'm going to have to figure that out. So beta round two, they read the exact same scene and two people told me it was their favorite scene in the section. <laughs> so I had two people in round one tell me it was their least favorite scene. I needed to edit it. And two people in round two tell me this was their favorite scene, the scene they liked the most in that section. <laughs> so like, that's what I'm talking about here where I'm like, okay, these four people all had different opinions on the same thing. So what am I going to do? Do I want to edit it? Do I think it's good? And I just have to ruminate on that and, and make a decision. And I think what was really hard for me at first when this feedback first started to come in from group two, at first I was really not sure what to do. I was doubting myself. I was thinking, crap, maybe this book isn't as good as I thought. Maybe I I don't know what to do. I'm getting all of these opinions. And I think the reason that I had that initial reaction is because I think I have lost a bit of confidence in myself and my own judgment due to the fact that I queried one book with literary agents before and didn't get an agent. So I think deep down, I'm really scared about that happening again. And so I'm not as confident this time around. I like my book. I think it has a really great concept. I like the characters that I came up with, but I think I have this deep seated fear of it not being good enough. So when I'm getting conflicting feedback or people giving me negative feedback on things that like I personally thought were perfectly fine, I think that just activated that lingering insecurity that I have, right? So I think that's the thing that I need to work on is I need to learn to trust myself again. And also it is physically impossible to please every single person, right? Because people have different opinions as we're seeing here. So I can't, I can't listen to everyone on everything, right? I can only take what I think is useful, what resonates, and implement that to enhance my overall vision. I don't know if anything that I'm talking about makes any sense, but I'm just trying to explain what's going on. And I think the mental state that I've been in, and it's very hard because when you're getting feedback from a lot of different people, people are going to disagree. And so you have to decide, okay, what do I want to do? What is resonating with me and what do I want to disregard? And that's a hard decision to make sometimes. I am feeling mentally better about it now though. I think my initial reaction was just much more panic because I already have quote unquote failed at querying before, but I'm feeling a little more optimistic and confident about it now. What I've been doing is taking some time away from the feedback. So to be honest with you, I haven't even looked at any comments that my second group of beta readers have left on part two or part three of my manuscript yet. 
I did look at their part two surveys because obviously I needed to confirm that they did them before sending them the final part. But other than that, I just haven't been reading the feedback because I wanted to have some time away just to focus on myself and come at the edits with a fresh perspective. So I've really been thinking about what my vision is. And now that my second group of beta readers is finishing up, on part three, I'm going to be able to look at all of their feedback, soak that in, and then make the edits from there. So that was a lot of talking. We are now one minute and 36 seconds away from the pizza, but that's really just where I'm finding myself right now. I'm going to have all the surveys hopefully soon, and then I'm just going to decide what I think is the right thing to do. And we'll see. I don't know when the manuscript is going to be done. I don't know when I'm going to start querying it. We're just going to see what the feedback is, what I think is resonating with me. Take a drink every time I say resonate. Um, and also what I just don't agree with, you know, because different people have different opinions. And when they give you conflicting opinions, you can't listen to every single person. But ultimately, at the end of the day, this manuscript is going to have my name on it. So I need to do what feels right to me deep down. So I hope that all made sense and wasn't just incoherent, anxious rambling. <laughs> said you wanted me to talk about is researching literary agents before querying. Currently, I have a one month subscription to Publishers Marketplace. I am just going to have it for one month because Publishers Marketplace is $25 per month, which is very expensive. So I'm just doing all my research right now, getting it all out of the way so then I can cancel my subscription. But thought it might be educational to show you what Publishers Marketplace looks like and some of the things that you can find on there. So let's take a look. I don't really want to reveal like all the agents who are on my short list because I just don't want to like overshare, you know? So I think I'll grab just one of the books on my shelf and see if in their acknowledgments they mention who their agent is and then I'll just look up that agent just as an example. All right, let's do that. I just grabbed The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. Do they say who their agent is? Um, Victoria Sanders. Victoria Sanders is their agent. So let's look her up. So I'm going to show you my screen. We're going to type in Victoria Sanders. Go under deal makers and click on her profile. It says that she has 146 total deals. The most recent of which is April 19th. 2024. It also shows you editors involved in her deals and the top imprints that she sells to, as well as notable titles. If you go down to the categories, you can see the different genres 
of books that an agent has sold. Now it is a little bit confusing because it lists debut like as a genre. They also don't have historical fiction as a genre, which is kind of unfortunate because I write historical mysteries. So it would be nice to know if agents are selling historical books, but just straight historical fiction is listed under general fiction. So that makes it a bit harder for me, but that's okay. So since I wrote a historical mystery, generally when I'm looking up an agent, I look at the debuts they've sold, the mystery slash crime submissions, the general submissions, and sometimes the thriller submissions, because thriller kind of goes hand in hand with mystery. They're different, but they, you know, appeal to a lot of the same audience. You know what I mean? I also like to see if the agent has six figure deals, because obviously that's not 100% necessary, but I think it's always a good sign. So we can also look at the deals in the last 12 months. There is not a specific number of deals in the last 12 months that I'm looking for, but ideally I want them to have a few, you know, I would say probably like three or more is something that I would feel good about. And I do think if they're a newer agent who maybe doesn't have very famous clients, seeing that they've made a lot of deals in the past year does make me feel more confident about submitting to that agent because it shows me, okay, they may be a newer agent and maybe they don't have any super famous clients, but clearly they're selling a lot of books actively right now. And that is always a good sign in my opinion. I also personally probably wouldn't submit to an agent who has never sold to a big five because I think if you've never sold to one or you haven't sold to one in the last, you know, couple of years, that's kind of a red flag to me. Like, obviously, you don't need to be published by a big five, but it is something that I would like. And even if a big five doesn't want to publish me, I want to feel like, okay, we gave it a good shot. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want a literary agent who is just going to send my book to indie presses or small presses. I want a chance at the big five, really. And if we don't get the big five, that's all right. But I, I want to feel like, okay, my agent is connected and there is that opportunity for that. So if you see a press and you don't know what it is, you can click on it. So Dial Press, that, that is an imprint of Penguin Random House, as you see here. So they've made 109 deals. So that's a, that's a reputable press. So hopefully that explains to you what I look for on the agents page. You can also see their ranking in different categories. So we'll do that next. Hopefully that explained a little bit what the agent's page looks like on Publishers Marketplace and what I look for. So if you have any questions, you can ask. I'll try to answer. So I'm going to go under deal makers, browse top deal makers, agents, and I'm going to select mystery crime. Let's browse. So these are the people who, according to Publishers Marketplace, are the top agents in mystery and crime. And I can then view their deals. So these are people who I might want to consider since I'm writing a mystery crime book. And you can do that with other genres. Maybe I want to see who's selling a lot of debuts. Because that's another thing that I think about. If somebody hasn't sold a debut author in 10 years, that might might be a bit of a red flag, right? Because obviously, if you're a, a new author, your agent needs to help you get your foot in the door. So that's another thing that I think about. You can also go under deals and look at the latest deals. So these are the deals 
from today. And I can look at those to see what catches my eye. And I can also filter this by category. So I could look just at the mystery crime deals, the debut deals. I could look for US, UK, Canada only deals. I have gone through every agent on my shortlist already. I think I had a shortlist of about 100 agents when I started. And I have taken some people off because, you know, I just didn't think they were the right fit for my story or their sales history wasn't what I would have liked. Obviously, I want an agent who does have deals with major imprints because there are some smaller presses that would be great to work with, but they accept unagented submissions also. So if an agent is only selling to those presses that I could submit to without them, then I have to wonder, okay, but what are they giving me, right? And, and that's kind of my point where I don't need to be published by a big five, right? I would, I would like to, but it's not necessary. However, I want to at least try for the big five. And if we don't get it, we don't get it. But I want to try. I want to give that a try if I have an agent. So that's something that I think about. I'm looking at what books are these agents selling and who are they selling them to? So that's a little peek into Publishers at Marketplace. I hope that was helpful. And if you have any other questions about finding literary agents to query, I can try to answer them. Obviously, I'm not an expert. and I don't have an agent. <laughs> so like, I'm not the be all end all of advice. But this is something that you all expressed interest in seeing. I hope it was helpful. And I'll try to, to answer any questions if I can. I'm not a querying expert by any means. But you know, I, I try to, to do what I can and do a lot of research into it. Because your literary agent is your business partner. And if you're gonna go into business with someone, you want it to be someone that you can trust. Because at the end of the day, it is it is a business. Hello, all. I'm here with my furry friend Drizzle just to give a little update. So I think it's supposed to rain all day today and I need to do my laundry anyway. So I'm pretty much just going to be at the house all day today, I think. My final beta reader surveys should be in. I know a couple of people asked for more time, so I might be missing a couple, but I should probably take a look at those to see their overall thoughts. Drizzle, this position is not really comfortable for me. You have me like off the bed. Oh, well, now I upset her. <laughs> but I'm probably going to take a look at those and work on some editing stuff. To be honest with you, I still haven't even looked at the in-document comments for part two. So I'll probably look at those and see what they're thinking. Goodbye, Drizzle. I'm sorry. I upset her just because I asked for a seat on the bed, like where my ass wasn't half off. <laughs> Apparently that's too much to ask for. I also signed up for feedback with my Readsy How to Write a Novel course this week. And this AM, I sent off comments to my partner on what they sent me. I also want to say, okay, this video in particular is not sponsored. I have been working with Readsy. I did two videos with them because they invited me to take this course in exchange for, you know, posting honest feedback about it on my channel. But I just want to disclose this video is not sponsored. This is just me telling you this because I wanted to tell you. But I have been enjoying this course and Reedsy asked me recently if I wanted a 10% off code for my subscribers. So I do think if you're looking to invest in a writing course that's going to help you with your novel, I think this is a good opportunity. I do have an affiliate link. I will post that in the description and or the comments. So you can go there to learn more about it. And I think this 10% off code 
is something to take advantage of because obviously courses like this are expensive. <laughs> I'm not denying that they are expensive, but I think this is a good way to sign up. The code they gave me is just Jackie10, so apply that at checkout if you want to sign up. I'm going to make a full video when I'm finished the course talking about some of my thoughts on it and who I think a writing course like this is good for. Because honestly, even though the course is expensive, I do think it's a fair price because you are getting a lot for the money. However, I think if you are going to pay the money, you should make sure that this is the right thing for you. And I think you're going to get your money's worth if you actually invest a lot of time in taking the course and taking advantage of all the opportunities. If you are looking to really do a deep dive into writing, then I think it's worth it. So I just wanted to shout out that they asked me for that coupon code. And I said yes, because I do genuinely think this is something that could be helpful to my subscriber base, you know? I've been asked to do sponsorships in the past, but I never said yes because I didn't genuinely believe in the product and that it would appeal to my subscriber base. Whereas I think this is something that actually is beneficial to me and could be beneficial to you watching this video. So thanks to them for sending me that coupon code and definitely check it out if you're interested. If you have any additional questions or things you want me to talk about in the video once I'm done the course, do let me know that as well because I'm going to be filming that video in October once I've finished all of the lessons. So that is my plan for today. I'm going to work on some editing stuff. Honestly, I was thinking that this was going to be my final writing vlog on Project Dagger, but I still have a lot of work to do and this video is already pretty long. <laughs> So maybe it's not going to be the last one. Maybe I'm going to need you another another vlog after this. Hopefully today I'm, I'm going to get some stuff done. Okay, I'm back to say actually, I lied. Everybody turned the surveys in, even the people who I thought might take longer. So that's good. Everybody gave it like a four or a five overall. But there are obviously suggestions on how it could be better. And so I really need to just look at everyone's comments and think about it. Because again, there were times where people filled out these surveys and they disagreed with each other. So that means I need to ruminate on it and think, okay, who's, whose feedback do I want to go with? Because if different people have different opinions on the same thing, obviously then I'm the one who has to make the decision and decide what to do. So I'm gonna look at the comments and just think about this for a little bit, but I got all the responses and you know, I appreciate everyone's time. So I'm gonna send them an email to thank them and then I'm gonna get to work because I still have stuff that I need to do and I need to figure out what I want. <laughs> You know, it's so much easier when everyone agrees, because then it's obvious what you have to do. And when people have different ideas, it's in my hands and I have to decide. So we'll see. Hello, it is, I think, like two and a half hours later, and I have gone through all of the in-document comments on section two and section three. I think section three was really the part that people seemed to enjoy the most. And I think probably section one was the section with the most amount of critique, though I have already worked on some changes to that section based on their feedback. So I think I'm gonna test it out on someone else to see if this is an improvement. I've also gone through and made all the line level, sentence level changes that people suggested because, you know, if somebody says reword this sentence or delete this line, I don't think you need it. Like, I'm just going to do what they say because I, I don't feel strongly about it, you know? And so if I don't feel strongly, I might as well just go with what they say. Like, oh, you think that sentence is repetitive? Okay, I'm not emotionally attached to it, delete. 
it's more so the scene level things that like you require more thought in my opinion because those are bigger changes and so I, I want to think about those a little more. I have to tell you I have so much anxiety. I have anxiety in general but I really have anxiety about this project and I think that's because I already queried a book once and here I am 13 months later still unagented. So I think I'm scared to pull the trigger because I'm scared of quote unquote failing once again. But the thing is, this industry is so subjective. And at a certain point, like I can't edit anymore. You know, I have the feedback from what, like 11 beta readers? That's a lot of beta readers. Really, I just need to think about what I want to do and make the changes that I think are useful. At a certain point, I'm going to have to stop looking at this book. It's getting to the point where I feel like it's harder for me to be editing it because since I have read this book multiple times, when I read it, it is so blah to me because I know it so well. So I feel like it's rapidly approaching that time where I'm sick of looking at it. And the thing is, you can never know 100% that it's time to start querying literary agents, but I often hear the advice that when you think this book has gone as far as you can take it on your own and you are physically sick of looking at it, that is the time for you to start querying. And I think I'm getting to that time. I'm definitely not sending it out right now. Don't get it, don't get it wrong. But I'm saying like, once I go through and implement edits based on this second round of beta reader feedback, I don't know what else there is for me to do. Like once I do that, I think it's it's probably time to pull the trigger on this because it is getting to that point where I'm like, I don't know what else to do with this, <sighs> which is scary <laughs> because I already quote unquote failed once and I'm scared to fail again. But I also don't know that I am going to fail this time. It could work out. I could send it out to 10 people and one of those 10 people is going to be my agent. Or maybe not. But even though I am still very scared, I do think once I've edited this, I will then be on draft seven. Well, this is currently draft six. So the final version will be, I guess, draft seven. That's a lot of drafts. And I feel like at that point, it might be time to test the waters. I've gotten a lot of feedback on my query letter as well. People have told me they think it's really well done and it sounds interesting. So I think I might need to just send it out to a batch of agents and see what the response is. If nobody asks to read the manuscript, then that's clearly a sign that it needs more work. But maybe it'll get a more positive response. And the thing is, even if I sent it to 10 agents and the response isn't what I want, at least then I've had some time away from the manuscript. So hopefully if I have to edit it more, I will be able to look at it with a renewed perspective. That's at least my thinking at this point. And it's a very hard position to be in because you can never know for sure when a book is ready to query. A book has to be really polished to land an agent, but also there is such a thing as editing for too long. At some point you have to give it a shot. And I think, you know, maybe October is gonna be the time for me to give it a shot. But as of right now, I have written some notes down based on things that betas have said. I need to reread the manuscript one more time myself because there is some feedback I got from them that I'm not really sure of. And so I need to reread it with that in mind to decide, okay, do I think this is a helpful suggestion or is it not resonating with me? So I'm not querying this like next week or anything, but I'm just saying, I don't know how many more rounds of edits I can reasonably do. And I am 
very scared. I think last time when I queried my first book, I had more confidence because I hadn't failed yet. <laughs> and so this time I have a lot more fear because I know that this may not work out the way that I want. I know what it feels like to not have an agent. And it's so dumb. I also fear <laughs> failing publicly. Like I thought to myself the other day, like, God, Jackie, if you don't get an agent this time and you have to tell all your YouTube subscribers that you failed again, they're all going to be thinking that you suck which is like such a dumb thing to think <laughs> because it's normal to not get a literary agent the first, second, or even third time. I saw an author the other day who got a six figure book deal on their sixth book, number six. So it, I'm not a failure if it doesn't work out, but that is, what my anxious mind is telling me. Like, oh my God, are you really gonna publicly fail again, Jackie? Like, what a loser. And I'm just being honest with you, you know? I have a lot of anxiety. I care a lot about what other people think about me. That's something that I have tried to work on. But I just wanna be honest, you know, about all the feelings that come with this process because I I'm sure I'm not the only person who feels this way. And it's also really hard to log on to YouTube or online writing communities and see other people land agents, land book deals. I don't think seeing that makes me feel jealousy per se. It just makes me feel inadequate. Like I don't see people posting their, I have an agent videos or their, I have a book deal announcements and like, feel active jealousy necessarily. It's more so when I see that, I feel, damn, like, why is that not me? <laughs> Maybe I'm not good enough. So it's not really jealousy. It's more so just my own insecurity, you know? And it is hard to see other people live out your dream because that's what you want and you're afraid, well, like, what if I don't get that thing? That means so much to me. I am rambling again, but I just have a lot of anxiety about this. So even though I'm just talking to my camera, it makes me feel a little better to get it out. I've literally been lying awake in bed at night thinking through all of this stuff. It really has been weighing heavily on me. So I'm just trying to be transparent in the vlog. I know there are probably other people out there who are going through similar journeys at this point, but I'm gonna wrap up this vlog probably tomorrow. It's already very long. This might be the longest writing vlog I've ever filmed. So uh, if you made it this far, props to you. <laughs> Hello everybody, Jackie here to wrap up this extremely long vlog. If you made it through this entire thing, kudos to you because I've been going on for so long. I really thought this was going to be my last Project Dagger vlog, but I don't know, I might need to make another one before I start querying because I do still have stuff that I want to do with it. <laughs> but this vlog itself is way too long, so uh, we need to end it here. <laughs> I've made myself a little checklist of scenes that I want to edit and also wrote down some things that I want to mull over a little bit more. It just helps me to have like a little list so I can see everything and check things off and feel that sense of accomplishment. I'm also going to send the revised opening to someone who hasn't read my book just to see what they think of it and see if this is an improvement from the beta reader feedback, but that's my plan as of now. I am, I am feeling good about it. You know, obviously there is no way to know how things are gonna work out. You can never know for sure if a book is gonna land an agent, if it's gonna get a book deal. All you can do is your best. And the fact of the matter is that you can write a really good book and still not get an agent. So I feel good about myself 
and my ability. So I'm just gonna do the best that I can and try to remain optimistic. I hope that this video was interesting and helpful. If there's anything that you would like me to discuss in an upcoming writing video or any questions that you have, do let me know and I will keep that in mind. If you're still here watching it somehow, by the grace of God, uh, why don't you leave an applause emoji in the comments? Cause you deserve applause for watching this entire thing. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. That really does help me and my channel. My social media links are in the description if you want to connect with me on those other platforms. And please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. I think that about covers it and I hope you have a superb rest of your day. Bye and I'll see you next time.